Merry Christmas. Hello, I'm Pastor Boyle from the Revival Baptist Church. I'd like to take a few minutes of your time and share with you about the greatest gift you could receive this holiday season. And that is how that you can know for sure that when you die, that you would go to heaven. A lot of people think that that's presumptuous and that you cannot know. Yet the Bible tells us that these things are written, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that we may know that we have eternal life. And I'd like to share with you some scripture verses. In fact, that's the reason for this season. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's the very reason we celebrate this season is the fact that Jesus would come and live here on earth and offer himself a sacrifice to give us eternal life. And 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15 tells us, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. There's a couple things that we need to understand about this gift of eternal life that's offered through Jesus, and it's all good news. The Bible calls it the good news of the gospel, and that is, number one, it's a gift. It's not earned. It's not something that we uh, have to work for or achieve, being baptized, keeping the commandments, living a good life. That's what most religions will teach you. Yet the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So right here from scripture, the Bible tells us that eternal life is a gift. It's not earned, not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. He even makes it clear when he says, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, in order to understand salvation, if we were to look at ourselves through the, uh, the, the, the eyes of scripture, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible tells us that if we're trying to earn our way into heaven, let's say this is heaven, and we're trying to live a good enough life to get to heaven, God looks down from heaven and says, uh, excuse me, all have sinned and all come short. So see, it doesn't matter how good you are, or how many church services you attend, or how many times you've been baptized, or how many times you pray. The Bible says you, we all have sinned, Therefore, we still all come short. And so salvation is not something that is earned or none of us would ever make it. The Bible says also, for the wages of sin is death. There the Bible is telling us, okay, we're all sinners, but we must pay that wage. And, you know, if we stop and think, if God's telling us we're not good enough to go to heaven and we'll never be able to earn it, where does that mean we're going? When scripture is telling us that we'll never be good enough to go to heaven, he then says, the wages of, of sin is death. Now, when the Bible talks about death, there's two parts. There's your physical, there's your body that'll lay in a grave one day. But there's a second part of death that people often forget, and that is our spirit or our soul. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So to use the Bible's words, the second death is a place called hell or a lake of fire. So back here, when God is telling us that salvation is a gift, and it's a great gift, but it's not something that it's earned, it, because if it's something we earn, the Bible says we would, spend our, uh, we would spend eternity in a place called hell or the second death. And so as we understand this gift, it's not something that we earn. Uh, you're never gonna be good enough. It's just something that you have to freely receive. In fact, let me go back to Revelation chapter six, verse 23. Uh, it's our Romans chapter three, verse 23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So we see when it comes to salvation, it's not something we earn, but it's something he freely gives us. And that is good news this Christmas season that we cannot earn it. Not only does the Bible tell us that it's not earned, but this unspeakable gift is eternal. Now, don't let that word just slip by without stopping and understanding what that word means. Eternal means without end. It never ends. And when Jesus Christ wants, uh, offers to give you one, it's a gift. It means you don't earn it. You don't promise to live for him or be a good person. Because understanding what scripture says about us, if we get what we deserve, we're going to spend a place in an eternity in a place called hell. But the Bible tells us that this gift he gives us freely is also eternal which means it never ends. 
That's why today I can know that I'm saved no matter what kind of life I've lived, no matter what kind of week I've had, no matter what I've, the mistakes I've made even today, I know that I'm still saved because it wasn't by my works. And when God gave it to me, he says, the gift of God is eternal life. And I want to share with you the rest of Romans 6, 23, where we saw the first part says, for the wages of sin is death. Simply means we've sinned, we must pay that wage and that's a place called hell. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And there again, Scripture is, is pointing us to the fact that salvation's free and it's eternal. It's without end. It never ends. If God at any point takes back that gift because I make a mistake, I sin, I didn't do something I should, and he takes it back, we have several problems. One, that wasn't a gift. And two, it wasn't eternal. And so salvation is when you can understand the predicament that we are in, that it's nothing we can save ourselves from, but something that God freely offers to us and he gives it to us eternally. The gift of God is eternal life. And then thirdly, the next part of this, this gift, this unspeakable gift, it's not earned, it's eternal, and it's for everyone. Let me read to you a passage from the Christmas story that most people will read this time of year right out of Scripture. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. They were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This good news of Christ's birth is for all people. And the Bible tells us that it's good tidings of great joy. And the reason is Jesus Christ came and lived a life we never could live. Bible says God became flesh. Jesus Christ took on the form of flesh, lived the life that you and I were supposed to live but we cannot live because we all have sin and we all come short. Yet the Bible says he knew no sin, but became sin for us. And so the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ lived that sinless life all the way to the cross. And when he died on the cross, he was taking your punishment. He was taking my punishment for the wages of sin is death. Yet he had no sin, but he paid sin's wages for you and for me. And as he rose from the grave, he offers that free gift to you and to me. And all we have to do is receive that in faith. Now, the Bible says in Romans 3, or sorry, John 3, 16, probably many people have memorized this verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's that word again, eternal or everlasting. All we have to do is receive that gift that for God so loved the world that he gave. So we see this unspeakable gift. It's not earned, it's eternal, and it's for everyone. Now, most people will ha you know, stop and they'll scratch their head and say, well, if it's for everyone, does that mean everyone's going to heaven? No, only those who receive that gift. And let me just be honest with you, the majority of people who have a problem with it being a gift are religious people. They're trusting their baptism, they're trusting their church attendance, and, or they're trusting the fact that, you know, I've not been that bad. I, I can't see myself worthy of a place called hell. My friend, you must look at yourself through this, the pages of scripture and God with a blanket statement puts all mankind in the same boat and says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you're gonna try and earn your way into heaven, you, you don't have to wait and find out what the answer is going to be. God has already told you, you will not make it into heaven by your good works. It has to be through this unspeakable gift that we celebrate this season. And that is what Jesus is offering to you freely if you would just simply believe on his name. Now, the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse, 20, verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. See, it's when we, by faith, stop trying to work our way to heaven, realize that we can't get there on our own, we'll never be good enough, and we simply, by faith, believe that He is, 
that he, God in the flesh, died in my place, rose again, paid my punishment, and is offering to save me as a gift. When I believe him, the Bible says, then I become the son of God. I can become a child of God by simply believing on his name. Jesus said this in Mark 1 15 and listen to his words. He says in saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. And this is the key. This is where it all comes down to whether who someone is saved or not. And that is, do you believe the gospel that Jesus Christ preached? Most people will say, oh, no, 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 I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe he rose again. I believe in the virgin birth. I celebrate Christmas too. We believe all. That's not what he's asking you to believe. That's part of it. But all that coming to, do you believe what Jesus taught? Do you believe the message that he preached when he said with his own words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And my friend, the Bible tells us that we need to repent not of our sin and stop living a bad life, but of our belief in ourself, trusting our own good works. And we need to believe the gospel. What is the gospel? The good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. What is the gospel? The unspeakable gift. What does that mean? It's not earned, it's eternal, and it's for everyone that would call on him in faith and receive that gift. I'd like to share with you how you could receive that gift and invite you to do so. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse number nine, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Now stop right there. So many people will confess with their mouth their sin. Lord, I'm a sinner, I'm sorry. That's not what he's asking you. See, we're not, he's not asking you to try harder and earn your way. He's asking you to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. He's good enough. He lived the life I could not live. The Bible says, if that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, what do we have to believe? That God hath raised him from the dead. See how our faith is going entirely on Jesus. Then that promise that follows, thou shalt be saved. My friend, if you would, by faith, stop trusting in yourself this season, stop trying to be a good person, stop trusting in your good works or baptism, repent and believe that gospel message that it's by faith alone. It's a gift from God. It's not a reward. There's a big difference between something earned, that's a reward, and a gift. And all through the pages of our Bible, the Bible tells us heaven is not a reward, it's a gift. Would you by faith bow your head right now and fulfill that promise in Romans chapter 10 where you can ask with your mouth and believe in your heart and confess all your faith in Jesus Christ? The Bible gives you a promise. You would be saved and not just saved, eternally saved. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you pray with me this prayer right now? If you mean this from your heart and you can say these words from your mouth, the Bible says this is the way you receive the eternal gift. Pray with me this prayer. Say, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I deserve to go to hell when I die. But I believe that you died for me and rose again from the dead. I'm trusting only in you Please give me the gift of eternal life and take me to heaven when I die. Thank you for saving me. Amen. My friend, I hope you made that prayer and I hope you meant it from your heart because that is how you get saved. Has nothing to do with you promising to live for him. Has nothing to do with you promising to go back to church. Has everything to do with trusting the life that Jesus lived and asking him to just freely save you. I wanna leave you with a verse because you mark it down, people are gonna come and they're gonna try and tell you it's not that easy. In fact, that's what all religions are out there doing. It's not, you have to be baptized, you have to keep the commandments, you have to, they're all getting you to trust yourself or in them. Yet the Bible says, Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 28, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Did you catch those words? Jesus said he gave eternal life. And to those that he gives it to, they'll never perish. So I have a promise from God that when I receive that gift of eternal life, Jesus said he gave it to me and I'll never perish. So someone can come along and tell me, well, you know, Pastor Boyle, if you do such and such, you'll, you'll perish. 
I'm going to trust the words of Jesus. He says I'll never perish because he gave it to me. My faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you made that prayer. Reach out to, the, to us in some way through this video or contact our church. We'd love to celebrate with you as you receive the greatest gift you could ever receive this holiday season. God bless.